Hello, everybody. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are. Uh, we're back with another edition of Azure Back to School, this, this time 2024. Um, and um, so, so let's get right into it. Um, I have my partner in crime, Chris Gale. Hey, Chris. Hello, Abdul. How are you? Good, good. Yeah, so I, this will be I cannot cool. believe it's uh, this time of the year already heading back. You know, kids heading back to school uh, gets, gives us a chance to at least bring some, you know, for Azure friends back to school to learn some good stuff. So um, one of my favorite community events for sure. But, oh, yeah. exactly. Exactly. Okay, so let's. Uh, so yeah, let's do introductions. So my name is Abdul Kazi. Uh, been in the cloud for almost 18 years now. Um, luckily, I got the MVP awarded this year. Uh, been also part of the community, so been contributing with the um, Azure advisors and the contributors um, on the back end. And plus, I'm also the co-host with Chris uh, with Come Cloud with us. So you're looking to speak or uh, doesn't matter if you're a new speaker or you're a pro speaker we're always looking for speakers so come give us a shout we'll be happy to have you on and then um chris your introduction please sure so uh for anyone who doesn't know introduction, you guys are already so famous everybody you walk in, hey that's chris scale yeah i know this guy <laughs> I know it happens at every conference on the streets, you know, the streets of Seattle, kind of other countries, Toronto, you know, it's, you know, it's a thing, but, um, <clears throat> but thank you. Very kind. Um, so I'm Chris Gill, a um, lot of fun stuff on the screen, but really, you know, we, we do just part of the community. We do this stuff early morning, late night, whenever um, to, to bring, you know, just focus to the community, focus to people that are learning, um, I like to teach, like to mentor, uh, really enjoy doing this stuff. Um, you know, it's the tech is, yeah, usually first and foremost, but the people matter the most. So um, love to do that and uh, love to be part of this community. So, yeah, same. Um, you know, we've been working to come cloud with us for a few years. Um, you can reach us there. Uh, you can reach us online. I'm always listening, watching on LinkedIn, um, maybe Twitter, not so much, but um, yeah, if you have any questions, please reach out. So let's get to it. So, Abdul, do you know why we're here? <laughs> I think so, but hmm, let's see. Hmm. I think maybe maybe this thing called cat keys, right? Yeah, that's the new word on, on the street you've been hearing about from a lot of people now, right? So I guess that's also something coming up because people are um tired of entering their multiple passwords on multiple devices they're like yo can we get our passwords now it's although people have password managers but still you know uh yeah yeah and it's is one of the things um just some some hindsight you know uh you know microsoft and other companies are all pushing for this multi-factor right multi-factor authentication everything you get into your bank account your school work account whatever else you know um there's a there was this push pun intended uh, but you know push from microsoft authenticator or duo or you know the google duo or other authenticators google authenticator uh, LastPass, all these things to to say here we're going to push something that you can accept and you know it's a quick token you get into an application and you're off to the races right and then over the past maybe year or so folks are like well that's it's not as secure as it really needs to be um <clears throat> and part of that is because it is just a push maybe it just comes to your watch right and you can hit the button and say accept and you go um but it's not as secure as maybe a like a private and public key relationship. And if anybody who's, you know, used to certificates, we see them everywhere. We can't get to most websites without it. We can't authenticate without that. Um, pass keys are just that. So it's that public private key relationship. Um, it's a URL specific type of relationship. So it's kind of locked to a site. So if I were to go to, um, you know, my signins.microsoft.com and set up a pass key for that, 
that's going to be listed behind the scenes. I can only use it from that device to that URL. So um, kind of nice feature. Again, um, very user specific uh, in, in, in certain areas um, where, again, it's like there's a different gesture, maybe a, you know, face, like a facial recognition, uh, maybe fingerprint scan, uh, might ask you for a pin or something like that. Um, but then there's uh, the device specific side of it where, again, that will only grant access um, if that pass key is stored on the device and that URL that you're trying to get to. So um, a little bit of a evolution. Um, I know a couple of sessions over the years, if anybody's in the community has been watching, you know, usually we'll dangle a set of FIDO keys, you know, and say, oh, look, here's, here's a Yuba key or whatever else, uh, you know, um, Facian or something else that we might be using. Um, and while those are great and good, they're still still solid stuff. Um, I don't expect to see that go away anytime soon. Um, there's an additional evolution to that FIDO2 standard. So passkey is part of that, um, whether it's a hardware or software, um, you know, that private public key. Um, again, you know, Microsoft mantra for that, secure by design, secure by default. So, or by default. default. So, um, And I think we're yeah. already getting there, right? Like in a sense, to your point, this is, like we've been using mobile, so think about mobile devices now. Pretty much every mobile device, regardless of Android, iOS, it has face recognition. You can do, you know, thumb uh, recognition. Uh, so yeah, yeah, like biometrics are already there. So this is something adding on, and I am still surprised. So even from a professional aspect with companies, people, a lot of companies still do not have MFA in it. Right. So right. you know. So yeah, this also plays into the zero trust architecture that Microsoft has. So it's really inclined with that. And I know we've done, I think last year we did a zero trust um, uh, talk as well, you know, which is a totally different topic by itself. But yeah, that really kind of aligns with that realm. And it's great because you need security. Like every day we're hearing about People getting compromised, they're getting attacked, they click on the link, you know. Right. Now, the, the biggest one I'm hearing, and I don't know about you, but WhatsApp. So there's been things going on where uh, you get a call from a African number. And they're like, hey, um, you know, um, I'm calling from this organization. I need to verify it. you. Can you give me your code? And they, once you give them code, they access to your WhatsApp. So, yeah, yeah this is becoming more prevalent now than ever. Because yeah. bad bad actors all all um, there. Yeah. No, it's 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 a scary world, but um, you know they, that's why they bring the that's why they pay us the big bucks, right? They bring the <laughs> professionals in there. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, there was um, you know, so we're we're gonna kind of toe into the the why use pass keys, and I know there's a, a bunch of bullets on here, but Abdul, you you reminded me of something you mentioned. You know, some some of the organizations still don't use MFA, um, and you know, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be an MFA shamer here, but you know, it's it's a recommendation, right? It's something to protect you, your users, the organization, the devices, um, the school, whatever it might be. Um, but I thought you brought something interesting up because I know even one of the organizations I worked at um, was reluctant to cover everyone in the organization with keys, right? And this was a few years ago, pre-COVID. Um, didn't really cover everybody. It was just, you know, like certain level and up. So we had some staff folks that just couldn't sign in remotely at all. Um, it was a cost thing, right? So it wasn't like the keys were super expensive, but, you know, for maintenance, for whatever else, it could be a challenge. It could be a financial challenge for some folks. So one of the things I didn't put on here, but um, in this world where, the potential that, you know, if I come and I'm a remote worker or whatever else, I, I may be bringing my, my personal device and that may be being brought into Intune or something else under some kind of device management. Um, but now I can use that as that fish resistant uh, approach. You can use Authenticator, Microsoft Authenticator on pretty much any device, whether it's iPhone, or Android. Um, but yeah, we can set up that pass key on that, you know, managed device too. So nice feature there. Um, yeah, and, and you know, to your point, uh, 
a lot of companies, so one of the biggest challenges with Six Sigma is the ROI is hard to measure. That's a lot, That's why a lot of companies, you know, say, no, we're not going to do this. But on the flip side, the PR nightmare, getting compromised, all that is going to cost you way more than if you, if you are, I don't say aggressive, but if you plan properly and then you go and say, okay, yeah, you know, we're going to be more defensive rather than you on the offensive when things happen. Yeah. Yep. And I'll, I'll leave that one there because that's a big discussions between CISOs and uh, and the business folks. So yeah. Sure. Sure. Um, but yeah, really good point. So um, so yeah, uh, just call out a couple things on the screen too. So again, um, you know, we talked a little bit about this. Uh, well, I'll start at the top, but that that authentication can be restricted to authenticate uh, to conditional access policy. So for folks who you know manage those in their environments, um, there's uh, authentication methods and fish resistant authentication methods now as a choice. Um, it's uh, nicer approach now i know some of the mfa sections in conditional access are starting to taper off those will go by the wayside and in lieu of you know some of these newer selections but fish resistance definitely one that's that's where the pass keys come into play um we talked a little bit about the you know the device um yeah maybe some workplaces you know my workplace does give me a device they you know pay for some or all of the services on it but you know what if uh what if that didn't happen and i had my personal device um typically research proves that folks are less likely to lose something that they've purchased on their own so um you know it's like this is my thing this is you know i'm used to it i have it in my hand in my pocket in my purse or whatever uh, fanny pack too uh, if you know folks use those but um that's that's a thing it's like they, they're less likely to lose it um but again we've talked um you know how how pretty easy it is to set up a pass key we'll go through some of that here in a bit um on a device but again it comes back to that organization really doesn't have to provision that device or that hardware piece um, whether it's a key or you know a phone or a device out um and this idea of uh, device bound pass key. So something that um, may be a little bit nerdier, but I wanted to put it on here anyways, because it, it means um, so much to me when I think about this, because we're in this world of, you know, if I go into Microsoft Authenticator, Google Authenticator, any of these solutions have a backup option, right? You back up your key, back it up to maybe iCloud or something else, but we're we're trusting, we're hoping that those protections are in place, that that backup is sound and secure, that it can't be poked or hacked or stolen. But um, this device bound passkey gets over that piece of it. Um, it's just a higher security. It can't really be backed up, uh, can't be shared. So there's a little bit of a, you know, a little bit of plain, pain um, with it, but also a little bit more of that higher um, security resistance. So, um, Kind of, yeah. a, I think and it's a nice feature. But. Depending on the scenario as well, right, Chris? Because so, for example, let's talk about um, break glass account. Hmm. Uh, you don't want to have authenticator tied to it because then whose phone is that going to be connected once you go there? So that's why you know you probably have a um, FIDO key attached to it, or maybe a, a different hardware other than your cell phone. So yeah. those are going to be. I know those are one-off scenarios, but those scenarios are going to be there. So, but yeah, those are great points to bring up. And I'm thinking about that, man, we could do probably an entire session on break class accounts and how to set up. But honestly, we've learned so much even over the past few weeks of how folks manage those. So, um, and I'll just say like briefly here, you typically it's in your best, um, it's in your best interest for folks that are managing an Azure environment to have at least two break class accounts. And yep. each one has a different multi-factor approach to it. Because if something, some verification engine is down, some part isn't working, um, you know, either the FIDO key works great, you can go, whatever, if I have to drive to the office, it takes me 25 minutes to get there to get the key and get in our system, so be it. But, uh, but you know, at least have to and two different authentication methods, one on each one. Um, I know people are doing some like, partial passwords on stuff and you know three people have to turn the key at the same time and unfortunately that's going to go by the wayside because microsoft is starting to require 
more so that MFA and that requirement's coming up here, I think, in October. So, And that's a good point because you have to exempt all your policies. So, glass, yeah, people do not exempt that. They're like, oh, it's part of the conditional access. I'm like, nope, that's the real <laughs> problem. We've seen that. So make sure the exemptions are there. Um, but, yeah, yeah, you're right. There's another, We could probably do another session after that. <laughs> <laughs> when I usually go through reviews, um, that's something we recommend highly and to your point too, right? Because yeah, one is not enough if something happens and it's such a, because then you would all want to be crippled or paralyzed by that account. Yeah. Because, yeah. yeah. All right. So um, I think we covered some of this, but just to, just to kind of spot check and say, you know, we're seeing a lot of usage with passkeys. Um, pretty much every website they're used to. Yeah, call out, you know, Amazon, Adobe, Apple, um, GitHub, Microsoft here. But, um, you know, the reality is that that's growing more and more every day. Um, I know even a couple of months ago, uh, some website that I went to, and it, it, however the implementation was, maybe it didn't go as planned, but it was not letting me in unless I set up a passkey. I think it was Target. So... <laughs> <laughs> so I uh, thought that was quite interesting. I'm like, I don't know why this is doing this, but, you know, I'm also on an insider build. So maybe it was, you know, just encouraging me to do the thing. Um, but yeah. Um, so just, again, just calling out uh, last pass, one password, um, you know, of course, Microsoft Authenticator, um, all compatible with pass keys. They support it. Um, you can either start from there. Um, inside of the Authenticator app and set it up, uh, which we'll show in a little bit. Or um, you can go to directly to like my sign-ins page or your account page and then start from that direction too. Um, so it's calling out support uh, because I think this is kind of important. Um, the window, at least from a Microsoft and Windows perspective, uh, Passkey is supported in Windows 10 and newer. Um, you know, yay for Windows 11 for people who are there. Um, doing that, hey? I don't get me started. <laughs> 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 don't get me. So, yeah. Um, no, and so let's uh, one little segue on that. So, yeah, there are some organizations. Um, you know, even recently we saw it's still running older window, uh, you know, operating systems and stuff. Um, Microsoft changed a little bit there in that whole Windows 10 thing. So, um, you know, any questions on like extending service or uh, extended servicing updates, um, you know, drop me a note. But there's some good articles out on the web about how that Windows 10 support can still last for another three years after this year. So um, might be costly, but, you know, Microsoft at least bent the knee and said, yeah, we'll, we'll continue to support it for another three years. You just have to pay us. So, <laughs> yeah. so um, but yeah, so back to passkeys, um, basically any website or any application that's supported by passkeys. So um, you'll, you'll know because they'll call it out. There'll be at least some little button or some QR code or something that you need to kind of work with. Um, Edge and Google Chrome, hopefully you're already at version 109 and higher. Um, my goodness, if you're still on 109, I'm sorry, because I know there are a few bugs in that version. So please don't be on that version. <laughs> um, but yeah, on your on your phone, um, Safari 16 or newer on iPhone um, also needs to be uh, at least at minimum. So um, any other thoughts here, Abdul? No, I think I'm in the Valentine. Sweet. All right. So um, we're gonna we're gonna talk to this first, and then we're gonna just show it live. So I just want to set that expectation. But um, again, you know, some of these requirements we just covered. Uh, just calling them out on this slide as we talk through some of these bits and pieces. But um, you know, again, there's obviously some some things like an active internet connection. Um, that's going to be needed, um, especially so when um, when you're using that like cross device Bluetooth piece. So that's some functionality where your mobile you kind of just integrate with your laptop uh, that's in front of you. So if you're going to a website on your laptop, um, you can actually say you know 
accept passkey or whatever else, your mobile device will prompt you and whatever it might be. If again, if it's a fingerprint or facial recognition or pin, um, you hit the pass key and then your website just continues on. So uh, nice feature functionality there. Um, but in order to set all this stuff up inside of Azure, which we kind of see on the right side of the screen, um, you need to be an authentication policy administrator. Um, more than likely, you're going to have to ask your global admin or somebody who has that global admin role um, to allow you that privilege for a little while. Um, or if you're fortunate enough to be using PIM, uh, maybe you can actually get that role yourself and just get it approved and follow through that workflow. So, um, but yeah, um, so inside of, uh, we say admin center here, so we're going to show it from an entry. ID side of the house. Um, again, it just bleeds a little bit between um, Azure and Enter ID, but inside of that admin center, um, you'd go to this location, the protection authentication methods, and then authentication method policy. Um, it's hidden under the FIDO2. I say hidden, it's really it's part and parcel um, with FIDO2 security settings, but, but it's under that key authentication policy. Um, so we'll look at this new checkbox that showed up in the past few months uh, called Microsoft Authenticator Preview. Um, there's a little hover button. So I'm just going to call out the, that little information button will actually show you this detail on the far right, which gives you the iOS Microsoft Authenticator. Um, they're called AA GUIDs. So it's basically a device identifier for what we're trusting. So from an iOS perspective, from an Android perspective, I believe both are covered. Um, and that's why we're seeing two, um, because of the public available authenticator and then the beta or um, you know, like insider version of it. So that exists for both Android and iOS. Um, but yeah, uh, what's nice is you hit that checkbox and it just kind of adds them to the list. So I guess one of the questions is Microsoft is putting everything in the to your point, uh, Entra ID portal now. So um, I personally used to use the portal.azure.com quite a bit. And then um, I missed some features there because everything is coming now. And um, <clears throat> so it's going to get used to it um, <laughs> ID portal because there's so much there. But yeah, to your point, these some of these features are hidden there. So you kind of have to go deep, deep, go deep down and look for these features. The other thing. To your point is Microsoft is always making, or not changes, but I guess bringing new features. So yeah, you might one day you might log in and that might get popped up right there. Although it might be in private preview, then it becomes public preview, and then it becomes uh, GA. So that's the cycle that Microsoft actually um, comes through. Uh, yeah. So you might say, hey, did, did it just come through now? Like Microsoft actually goes through the private previews and talks about, and a lot of people that actually give feedback and even in the public pre preview when they open it up to the general public, those feedbacks are coming through. Uh, and that's I really love the processes because then you can provide feedback and say, hey, I tested this out in my lab, it does work, and then we can take a look. But yeah, um, it, it's been good so far, I would say. And I love that because I, I, I tell everyone, I think that's why I'm I, they keep me in the MVP program because I keep breaking stuff and telling them that it's broken. <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully we don't, you know, break our demo, but we're, we're going to cross our fingers and hope the demo gods and goddesses are with us. But, um, you know, again, Abdul, thank you for calling it out. It's like you had the crystal ball before we, we did this. But, um, you know, there's a couple different ways that you can get to enter a, um, for those that I still go to portal.azure.com, I'm not gonna lie, I put my hand up, tell you know, tell the truth here, but um, but I'm working on my you know entry skills. So enter.microsoft.com or ad.cmd.ms um, will also get you there too. So nice little community project. Um, love that cmd.ms site, but yeah, get a chance to check that. Uh, buddy of ours, Merrill, put that together, and some other folks. So go check that out. Um, the one at the bottom, a lot of stuff that we're covering today, um, just an easy way to get there, but aka.ms slash passkeys. Um, it's a really quick way to kind of get an idea of how to set it up, how to manage it, how to, you know, 
uh, manage it on your device and just help out others. So um, with that said, we're going to try and bring up our little live demo environment here. So um, I'm inside of Enter Admin Center, and um, what to my wondering eyes did appear a little warning in the top right-hand corner. So again, we talked about this earlier. 1015 is that date for MFA. So Microsoft will be enforcing that. Um, there's a lot of detail around that in the community. Um, please do the right thing. Go get in front of that, get set up, get going, um, because this is real, and I don't expect Microsoft to move that deadline anytime soon. So, um, so we're going to hit the X on that. But um, as I come into Entra, I have all these blades on the left-hand side. We're going to be under that protection blade and then authentication methods and policies. So when this brings up policies and we see pass key, the FIDO2, that's where we really want to be taking a look at this configuration. Um, this, again, um, you want to be careful with this. If you haven't done any of this work in your environment, you want to step through this slowly. Um, you probably don't want to be at the all users. You might want to be setting up a select group. So set yourself up an M365 group um, or dynamic group or however you want to handle that um, in your test environment first or, you know, QA validation environment and then in your production environment. But slow and steady wins the race there. You want to make sure that you have a group. Um, some folks that are opted into it first to validate it, uh, maybe yourself or others, uh, find a few friends. Put them in the group and then configure. So once we go into that configure screen, um, we're going to make sure that we allow that self-service setup. Um, recommendation to start is to not enforce that attestation. Um, I've had that trip on a couple devices. I'll be honest, I think that's something that's still being worked on. Um, it seems to work really good on iOS. Not so great on Android, but that's um, from me to you. So a little bit of a gift there. Uh, and I don't know about your experience, Abdul, with with setting this up and, you know, how it's been seamless or maybe not as seamless at times. It, it, it was hit and miss. I, I, I'll tell you that. So, yeah. Um, I had to give it a couple of tries and then, yeah. <laughs> so, Cool. Um, but yeah, so we we do, however, want to do this enforce key restriction. So again, that AA GUID that we were talking about, um, there's documentation on Microsoft site on other vendors. So again, if you're looking at the you know the Yuba keys of the world, the Facian, the you know other other providers that are building these devices, um, go take a look. They document very well what their AA GUIDs are. Um, why am I hitting on this so hard? Well, if I do that enforce key restrictions and I hit this next check mark that says Microsoft Authenticator, it's going to lock this environment to only these types of keys that can register for passkey or FIDO2. If somebody's already in your environment and they've set up one of these other keys and they've already you know done all the good stuff, they're going to be fine. But if somebody comes with that same type of key and it's a you know, a different brand. So say I didn't have YubiKey listed in here, they will not be able to um, to sign in and enforce and set up the pass key. So uh, just wanted to call that out. But again, that's that, uh, you know, enforce key restriction, restrict specific keys um, kind of work in combination there. Um, so again, this checkbox um, where I did not have these IDs before, the 90 and the DE1, um, they're now being added. Um, as well as those insider ones. So um, at one point in time when I set this up, I hit save and I, I, I call it cloud time. You know, it's like a speed of cloud, but um, poof, anywhere between zero and 20 minutes, usually that will be alive and well. Um, you know, there's a little bit of work that you're going to want to do inside of conditional access as we talked, but, you know, assuming that all of that's in the place. Um, we can come back and then walk through me or any one of us, you, um, going and setting this up on your device. So where I started was on my Android, I went inside of Microsoft Authenticator. And I said I wanted to set up a new authentication method, um, and I chose Passkey. And from here, it took me to my sign-ins. So on my device, it switched over from Authenticator into my sign-ins. 
and I'm choosing this passkey in Microsoft Authenticator as the bottom option. The next, um, it just confirms and says, yes, is this the method you want to add? So I would hit add. And then it's going to prompt me and give some information about you know, what a passkey is, but you already know because we started to tell you this earlier on. Um, but it's always a good reminder. Um, it will you know, integrate with your face, your fingerprints, a pin, all that good stuff. Um, but then it gives you the requirements of your device. So you got to make sure you meet those. Um, you select next. And then it asks you to make sure that your device is configured for a passkey provider. So um, again, depending on iOS or Android, it's a little bit different, but you need to go into your settings on your device. Um, and then it will usually take you right to passwords, passkeys, autofill, or whatever it may be on iOS. Um, you select Authenticator and you return back. And it will take you to the next step, which is to get your device ready. So from here, um, you will say, sure, I'm ready to do this. Um, sounds like fun. Sounds like a good thing to do. Um, I'll get the setting up your passkey. And then I'll get prompted um, to continue to set up that passkey on my device. So once I select continue, um, I'm now taken back to, hey, you've, you know, configured this passkey on your device, let's give it a name so that I know, you know, different passkey from one to another. Um, you'll see in the background, of course, I have uh, like a YubiKey set up, some other push MFA set up uh, behind the scenes. But um, again, you want to differentiate those and not just call it security key like, uh, like I did here. So uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, we'll click next. Um, and voila, we're finished. So now we can use that passkey on the, you know, the website that we were at least going to. Um, in this regard, it's, you know, for Microsoft services. So uh, that would allow us into most, if not all, Microsoft services with a passkey. So any uh, additional thoughts, Abdul? No, that was great, actually. And I love, love the simplicity of setup, right? Like it doesn't go through... 10 bazillion windows and no. check boxes and stuff. So like, obviously this is a simpler thing. Like if I compare this to conditional access, that obviously has more options because you're talking about applications, networking, different scenarios, but this is, although this also has a lot of options as well, right? Like, oh, yeah. but, but um, I like the simplicity that the way Microsoft has done and I'm liking, and obviously, you know, Microsoft Authenticator app has become one uh, <coughs> app to chalk, if you will. Um, yeah. We used to, to your point, when you started, you know, you can use Duo, or you can use Google um, Authenticator. There are other ones, third party, Okta, this and that. I, you know, depending on what your company has, but yeah, having one and then going, using that for personal and professional. <laughs> That makes it so easier, and yeah. and Microsoft yeah. also does a good job of integrating the accounts as well. So, if you have a personal Outlook or Hotmail account, you know you're using that with uh, with KeyPass, it works nicely. And then the work one, the professional like work or school account, so that actually gets separated. That they're not cobbled together, but it's easier to use them. And which ones to use, you can keep track. So mm -hmm. I'm liking that piece as well. Oh, very good points. Love it. Love it. Love it. So, um, you know, we're, we're nearing the end of our session here, but, you know, some, some things that we, um, you know, Abdul and my gift to you all, um, some things that are available in the public. No, we don't update these, but we, we want to call them out. Um, something to take a look at. Um, that AAD blog. Um, Funny, if you click that link, it will redirect you to the Entra ID blog. So, yes, it's still, you know, um, for those um, purists out there that are still in the debate of Azure versus Entra, um, yeah, it's it looks like Azure ID is still winning. So, it's fine. <laughs> um, Entra.news, um, another great spot to just take, a, you know, keep a pulse on what's changing the community, what's um, being pumped out by Microsoft and other folks surrounding identity management and everything Entra. Um, a bunch of stuff that we went through today, some more finer details is that third bullet, um, how to enable authenticator passkey. Um, 
if there's anything that we missed, it will be there. Um, and our apologies if we missed it. But um, the fourth one, um, again, just some other authenticator facts and, um, you know, uh, basically a series of questions and answers on the whys, the hows, the, you know, if I get into this, how do I, you know, how do I restore if I can, or, you know, how do I handle certain situations? So a lot of good info there. Um, and then this thing called Authenticator Lite. I figured I'd call that out um, for folks that are using Outlook. Um, just, the, you know, the new Outlook app or whatever else. There's some feature functionality there that um, allows you to do MFA using Authenticator Lite. So, um, so I'm running into a lot of folks that just don't know about that thing. But I um, figured I'd take this opportunity in the soapbox to just call that one out. So um, any other thoughts, Abdul? No, this is great. And, you know, uh, yeah, you guys give this a shot and then let us know uh, what do you think. Are there any features that you should think should be added? Microsoft is always looking for feedback. I know this is going to evolve as we go along. Um, it's a huge space, right? Everybody, and this is not only Microsoft spaces, it's all the other vendors like we showed, you know, uh, KeyPass, OnePass, even Google is a big player here, Apple. Um, so, yeah. Let us know what other things you're looking for, or and could could be you know the, what use cases are there? Because I can name a ton of use cases already, oh, yeah. but, um, <laughs> which is another session by itself. <laughs> so, yeah. But yeah, like this. So yeah, uh, hopefully this was a uh, informative and helpful session for you to get started. I know we just scratched the surface. Uh, this is by no means a detailed. Uh, session or deep, deep down session. This was really mainly just introducing the concepts and then how you can set it up. But yeah, uh, hopefully this was useful and uh, you know, hopefully um, you get to your Pasky journey. Yes, 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 yes. Well said. Um, so yeah, um, you know, we're at the end of our session, uh, just a few parting words, but again, thank you to Azure back to school community. Um, I know Derek and, uh, our friend Dwayne, um, to work really hard and a few others to, to get this produced for everybody every year. So we applaud their efforts to keep this going. Um, we thank you for your time tuning in and we hope to see you, uh, out there somewhere in person, IRL or on the web or whatever else. So. Um, thank you all. Have a great day. Thanks, everybody.